Hey everybody, I'm Katie. And I'm Miranda, and we're gonna talk about how to fit your pack for backpacking. So you're always welcome to come into an REI store and then have one of the experts there fit your pack for you, whether you bought it five years ago or you bought it that afternoon. But if you're looking for some tips on how to size and fit your pack when you're at home, here they are. All right, so the first place to start is size of the backpack. What we're gonna do here is fit a backpack for Miranda and backpack sizes go off of torso length. So we have two landmarks we're looking for. Number one is your iliac crest. So right at the top of your hip bones, right below the squish, you can set your hands right on top of your bones. So if you go ahead and do that, that's your iliac crest. And if you turn around for me, Miranda, sure. you can draw a line right between the iliac crest on either side to the middle of the spine. And that's gonna be your first landmark. The other landmark we're looking for to measure torso size is if Miranda, if you look down, the C7 vertebrae, which is the one that pops out when you put your chin to your chest. So you find it looking down, but Miranda, if you go ahead and look up, you'll wanna make sure you measure with your head in a neutral position. So between these two landmarks, right here, we measure top to bottom, and for Miranda, her torso length is 16 inches. Got it. So. With torso length there, you can go ahead and check the sizing charts for each backpack manufacturer on REI.com. So now that you've used the sizing charts to find the right size of pack, it's time to get fitting on the pack. So we're using Miranda's backpack today. Let's go ahead and pop this on. When you're first putting your backpack on, you wanna make sure you have a little bit of weight in it. 15 or 20 pounds is a good approximation of how that pack is gonna sit on you on the trail. Um, but when you put the weight in, close the backpack up and uh, make sure you buckle it closed so that that weight isn't running around on you while you're trying to adjust everything. The other thing is before we get to fitting the pack, you're gonna to wanna to make sure all of the straps on the back end of the pack here are all loosened up so that we can do that adjustment once it's on. Cool. So now that I have my pack on, uh, this is my personal pack, so I know that it fits me really well. But if you're walking through a pack for the first time, you're going to want to start at the bottom of the pack and then work your way up with the straps. And this is actually the best way to put your pack on every single time you put it on your body. So first thing we're going to start with is my hip belt. So I want to make sure that this hip belt and the padding is centered on my hip bones. So I'm going to go ahead and buckle that and then tighten it down. Ideally, when you're fitting a pack, you want about 80% of your weight on your hips so that your legs are carrying most of the weight rather than your shoulders carrying it. So your hip belt's probably gonna need to be uh, pretty tight in order to do that. The next step is to tighten your shoulder straps. So I'm gonna go ahead and grab these straps. There we go. And pull them down and back. And then a little too tight, like that. And then we'll do the load lifters. So, Load lifters are these straps here that basically pull the weight of the pack, the top of the pack forward. So you're not like careening backwards while you're wearing the bag. So we're gonna go ahead and tighten those just a little bit, just to a point where the weight starts to come forward, but not so tight that it's uh, crunching on your back like that. And then the last step is your sternum strap. So the uh, tendency of the sternum strap is to want to tighten it a whole bunch, but you actually just want this to be buckled closed and with a little bit of tension on it, just so you're pulling weight away from your shoulders. Again, we're looking for having about 80% of the weight on our hips so that my legs are carrying it rather than on my shoulders. Your legs are a heck of a lot stronger than your shoulders are, and you want to have only 20% up here so that you're not creating a bunch of tension in your shoulders. Now that I have the pack on and fitting comfortably, I'm gonna walk around for about 20 minutes or so. This is gonna give you a good idea of how the pack will feel on trail because uh, if it doesn't feel good after 20 minutes, it won't feel good after 10 miles. Um, so that's kind of what we're looking for here. Obviously you want the pack to be comfortable, but there are also some visual cues you can look for that will help determine whether the pack is a right fit or not. And Katie's gonna talk through those now. You bet. So if you're doing this at home, you can have a friend look for these or stand next to a mirror so that you can see them. But if you take a look up here, you'll notice that the shoulder strap comes up and around Miranda's shoulder and meets into the back of the backpack. At this point, about an inch or two lower than the height of her shoulder here. You'll also notice that there's not too much of a gap between her actual shoulder and the strap there. The other thing you can look for is the angle of the load lifter straps. So this strap right here should be at about a 45 degree angle. If that strap looks like it's angled really steeply or super shallow, it could be an indicator that you need to adjust your torso within the size of your backpack. So some backpacks allow you to slide the torso component up or down by a little bit, even within one particular size, and it's just more fine tuning for you so your backpack really feels good. 
So those are some visual cues. Some other things you can look out for are pressure points. So if you have pressure points in the front of your shoulders, it probably means that your shoulder straps are too tight. Loosen those. If you get pressure points in the back, it probably means that your load lifters are too tight. Loosen those up. You're probably going to have some fine tuning on trail within the pack. So don't be deterred by a little bit of uh, adjustment that needs to happen even within those first 20 minutes. Another thing to keep in mind is that while these measurements for torso length are a really good barometer for what size you need, you may have to do uh, additional adjustments within the pack. So like Katie mentioned, there are some packs that have adjustable torso length, but you can also swap out the hip belt or the shoulder straps on some, on some packs to get different sizes. This will just give you further adjustment as needed on the pack. All right, so you've got your pack fit. It's feeling pretty good on you. One last thing to remember is taking your pack off. So remember when we were originally fitting it, when we're putting the pack on, you buckle hip belt first and then move up to the shoulder straps and onward. When you take your pack off, you're gonna go the exact opposite direction. So sternum strap gets unbuckled first, shoulder straps get loose in second, hip belt gets loosened and then unbuckled last. It's a really good idea to loosen your hip belt before you unbuckle it. And that's just so that when you put the pack on, you don't have to try and struggle with buckling it. You get a lot more pull from the straps than you do just trying to muscle it closed. If you have any other questions about backpacking, especially how to uh, pick a pack, you can check out our video here. And if you haven't yet, go ahead and hit subscribe below and we'll see you later.